Ram Singh. Whoa! just down in, in this area here and obviously you know what you're doing in Photoshop and you could simply start to take out the green which is not helping in your blues um, or desaturate it a little bit because you've obviously got a good editorial hand going on in here and I think that you know what you're doing so I think that you should allow yourself a little bit more liberties in Photoshop to, to sort of put forth your your concept. I think the moon looks fun because it's soft and it's never soft. Like it, in a picture like that, it's never soft. So I was going to either take it out or make it sharp. Well, I thought it would work for some stuff. Yes. And if, I thought that if you look at the moon's that way, 
and that's that uh, a distance further away. Well, it, it is, it is but infinity and so exactly, so. exactly. So you have to have that. The, the trick to being able to fool people in Photoshop is to have a really good understanding of the mechanics of how it would naturally be. And as Greg says, there's no such lens that would hold the front and the back in focus without infinity. Like you've gone past infinity, so it can't not be in focus. And the sky doesn't look but I thought that was the intention to yeah, get a kind of fairy tale. Like, uh, I've seen a lot of shots of that bridge even before I was shooting yeah. that. So I didn't want it to look like so the existing shots that exist. So I wanted to make it look surreal in a way. Yeah. And not look like that's a place that actually exists. Exists, I see. And I think you're here again. Your ability with, with Photoshop and I think these two as a pair are fantastic. And they're, they're great to open and close. But in a sense, I feel like in a book, I would want them right next to each other because they are a story that works well together. And they're really well, well done. Super, um, super well done. I love them. If I can say my favorite picture in the whole portfolio is this one. <laughs> I love this picture. Yeah. Because I think it, t it goes beyond just being a picture of a cute child. And it's like, it, no, no question. <laughs> but it's an, but it's actually an environmental portrait. Yeah. It with a very sophisticated environmental portrait with very sophisticated colors, and yet it's this adorable picture of an adorable child. It's really great, and she has so much personality in the picture. It's great, but from a color standpoint and a compositional standpoint, it's really beautifully done. I mean, it's a really sophisticated picture. I think it's great. I like it a lot. I have to say, I really do. Did you pose her to look like an adult? Or? Yeah. I I wanted to make it look like if there was another player you know, or they were having a drink or something, just coming up next to the pool. <laughs> so then she was doing a bunch of stuff and like we connected. And then uh, whatever I would ask her to do, she would do it. She would smile in between and be serious. So for this particular one, like she was just moving her legs. So I, I didn't stop her from moving that, but I just wanted it uh, to snap on where like the legs were at that right. point. And the expression was not too much of a smile, but like kind of a diva. <laughs> <laughs> it's even better knowing that you work that shop. Yeah. That's yeah. no, great. I want to pull up all these beautiful um, spaces. Spaces, yeah. So. I mean, we, it's so rare that we see just this gorgeous space with this time of day and texture and all this, and the person is not the main, you know, doesn't occupy most of the real estate. When I went over, though, to the board, when I actually looked more closely at the people, I thought, oh, it's a shame they're all looking at us being posed. I don't mind that they're still, like I said before my mic was turned on, that you pose them in a classic way, not a static way, so I feel that's a, a point of view. Um, but here they're kind of looking at us. So that part, I wish they were more melancholy, like maybe their posing has to fit the mood of the place in, in some way. Um, and then they were used here. That's why I put this one up. Um, so. Is it the same three? It's the same three. So, and the same, pretty much the same outfit. So I don't know if, if that's good when you kind of see, see, like, if I have a wonderful picture of a dancer, I never also show this second choice because it's, it devalues the mystery and magic of the one that you think is only one of it. <laughs> you really have more, but you don't want to tell people that. So this pales by comparison, I think. So, but I just love your, I'm so glad yeah, you can definitely it. take her out of that shot and it would really be a really amazing shot. Everything is balanced, the inside and the outside. It's animate. The place is really as animate as the person is. And this too, I mean, how many, were this couple of um, exposures or anything? You know, no, it's just one. Is, fact, Has God made it? That's actually yeah, the easiest one. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> the only difference is that I have to do a little bit of uh, retouching after this port to uh, actually bring it up and it's more to my But the sky was like that of the day. Before sunset, and it, 
it's just one stroke and it's all this uh, kind of uh, saturation and a uh, little bit of kilometers and that's mm. pretty much how mm. I got it. Which means all you really need is a camera and a good sensibility. You don't need the strobes, you don't need the whole thing. You just pick the right time of day and, and you're in business. And, and speaking of, um, I want to go back to a couple of images, uh, Lois, the, the two of the girls that are um, uh, sitting on the, the rock. Um, I just want to mention a couple of things about this. Um, the young lady, the first young lady that's closest to the camera, when you're rocking that hip away from the camera, you're exposing the largest part of the body. It's going to make, and her hips are twice the size of her face. So it makes her, her, her backside look, I mean, it makes her look much larger than she is. So one of the things that, that you want to do, first of all, I, would, I feel like they're too close together and they're too static. See how their heads are all side by side? So I would recommend, like you've got all these other different rocks, so you might want to break them up a little bit and stagger their head heights a little bit. To give them um, to give them some breathing room because you've got this huge expanse and then these three girls all clump together um, and they're because they're they're so close together and then they're looking towards the camera we kind of can't decide whether it's a scenic or whether it's a portrait and then it's 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 too um, static of a pose it doesn't fit the scene in addition to that the other thing that I would recommend doing is dialing down your flash your flash is, is so powerful, it looks flashy. It looks, it looks, hey, I can tell that you've got a flash on that. So uh, when you're in an outdoor scene like this, try powering your, if you're gonna use flash in the, um, uh, in the afternoon instead of using the ambient light, power your flash one stop below ambient. And what'll happen is that flash will fire and it'll just fill in, it'll just give enough light to fill in the eye sockets without making it look flashy. It'll look much more pleasing and a little much softer, like a, a more soft ambient light source. Um, so that would be my take on that one. They should be dreamy there. And yeah. That, you know, you, you have a dreamy attitude towards the landscape. Why not, you know, put them? And they don't need the sweaters, I think, that's also kind of. And it's also, you know, if you can, give thought to the choices of clothing that your subjects are going to wear. Now, we don't always have control over that, but what I try to tell clients is that if I'm going to photograph you in an outdoor environment, um, uh, be in a, in a harmonious palette. I don't want them all matchy-matchy because that looks really cheesy and 80s style. But I don't want them to be in white and black. See how the, the only person that we really see, if you squint and you look at this, the only thing we see is we see that first girl and then that third girl's skirt. That's the first thing that draws our eye. And so if you can, give, give consideration to the, the, the palette of clothing that you're going to use. One little critique or comment is, um, do you know what I'm going to pick out on this? <laughs> um, you did a great job. I love it. It's upside down. I'm seeing your wire. I'm seeing the fishing line. And that's a little thing that is something that needs to be, you know, you just need to retouch it out. Because it's great. And it, as soon as you see the talent for shooting the product and the person and being able to marry them, and uh, I want to see more of it. I think that, um, where do you want to go? Uh, uh, honestly, I'm an international student. Mm -hmm. I can stay there only for five months after graduation. I would love to work here for two years to assist, and then eventually work as a freelance for advertising and writing and writing. Mm -hmm. But uh, if that's not possible, then I'm happy. It's just, it's a very interesting photograph. Tell me the thought process behind creating that and why you did that. Yeah, this one is the one that's close to me because sometimes when I'm low and I'm not that uh, 
I get this dream of falling endlessly into a bottomless cliff. So uh, when when uh, this was an assignment calling uh, called Loki. So I wanted to do something Loki, but not just with the lighting, but with the the whole scene behind it. Like not just a Loki lighting, but even the picture is Loki. So uh, it gave me a thought of somebody falling from the ray of light or a manhole or this. Some, something that he sees that there is light there, but I'm not able to reach that light spot. So he is falling, and there is no end to it. So there is some smoke behind it, and then it's just kind of Loki that he wants. He's aspiring to be there, but he can't be there. I saw it as a light, and not as a sort of an edge to it. Yeah. And so. I thought that would that, that was like taking a bit longer than the Loki. Yeah. yeah. So then I then it works as those the interaction. It's one of these I love how to work. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the fact that um, you don't have to work to work. Is the fact that you didn't take it literally. You, you know, you took your assignment and you gave it your personal spin and you made it very interpretive. That is a very unique quality. It's a very difficult thing to do. Many people are very literal. They think one plus one equals two. So I really applaud you for uh, for your creativity and the fact that you took something a personal experience or personal um, soulful thing that you wanted to interpret and you put it into one of your pictures. That is one of the things that's going to make you a very great photographer because when you are able to quantify, you know, what's going on in your own soul and then and you're able to interpret that either photographically or through literature. Some people do it through writing. I, I think that's just really a wonderful gift. In fact, in his movement, he spoke. You could interpret it that he's falling. I, I feel he's coming up. Yeah, I yeah. feel he's yeah. rising. But it's it's not a hundred percent explicit. And then there's also you know that he has fallen, and he's trying to get back to where he's fallen from. So you've got the up and down. You tend to look where you're going. So yeah. if he was falling, I would have expected him to be looking down. But again, I think. Obviously, everybody's drawing something different, and that means it's, it's, it's a success in that regard, and that it's, it's vague. And then nothing's really moving also gives a sort of a, a floating feeling. Yeah. I think you exhibited great control over your light and your shadow areas. Um, I love the depth. You know, the fact that we can see that in the shadow areas of his, um, of his jacket. Tell me about the detail that you took in the stylizing of this. Did you detail it in stylize this? Or how did that happen? Yeah, the one I asked him, the number of the script, and he showed me a bunch of shirts, so I didn't want them to be white shirt because I didn't want it to be a pretty light. I wanted the bridge to be the brightest part of the image. And I knew that I was going to kind of have a smoky background, so I used baby powder from the pants and backlight it. Ah. So to make it look like smoke, this I didn't have a smoke machine itself. So. Uh, I, I knew where I was going, the picture was there in my head, but it was difficult to convey to the model. So I had him post the way I wanted him to be on the uh, table, which I think I've made but everything else is uh, the frame. He's not so jumping? He's not jumping. He was leaning on the table, and uh, I took the table out, but other than that, the so smoke and everything is pretty much in camera. So, uh, and then uh, I wanted the page to be the brightest part, so I had, I had him look up and I, because behind the thought, the thought that I had behind the picture was when I fall, then I want to be not falling or looking up to that positive side and not be looking at the negative side. So I, I wanted it to be a connection with the light and him. And so that's how I ended up posing him. So, so he's on the table, that's one exposure. No, it's just one exposure, the whole picture. Okay, and you took the table out? Just the table out. Oh, what's really nice is your Photoshop work isn't Photoshoppy. It's not obvious at all. I mean, it's believable, and that is really, really good. That's so good to see. I, I can't even tell you how many times I've seen bad Photoshop work. It makes you want to poke your eye out the door. I mean, it's just like, oh, shut the front door. Just put me out of my misery. You're dangerous. Well, I know, but, but but it's really so nice to see when somebody does it so well that it makes the story believable, and that you don't even that you don't think the Photoshop avenue. And I'm especially impressed because Lois does jumping stuff, and so she's used to photograph you know photographing people jumping, and for 
Or I never photoshopped. Yeah, and she no, you would. Oh, you can't even imagine you dream about that. That you would dream of doing that. So the fact that that it seems like you were fooled by that, that you thought he was jumping. I thought he was jumping and recomposing. Yeah, yeah. See, I think that's quite remarkable. I think that says a lot about about your ability. You have a tremendous amount of control, which really shows up in all your pictures, and that's, that's a great thing about it. That is, it looks fantastic. He's got a real purpose, you know, it's mysterious, but he's got a purpose. But I'm wondering, the ones that I'm calling classic, which are just, you know, look at them, for a second. Like, Chuck Berry, 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 Chuck Again, I, I feel these are very passive, but in some of them, like we sort of talked about this configuration, in a way it brings down your fantastic vision to have, it's a weak, it becomes a weak element the more we analyze it, that you know, that you shouldn't have any of these elements. I love, again, the feel of the place and the time. I don't really know what they're doing, looking at, or thinking, so I'm not sure of the story that it's telling. Um, and I'm thinking, in general, you may want to think more as you go forward of um, having them inhabit some story just the way that guy did, or the girl who was levitating on the bed. She's, she's definitely a stiff one. I mean, I, I can't quite call her classic. It just looks like, you know, hold this and hold that. I mean, she could have been porn or something. But, um, or it could have been a moment where someone's talking to her like she's doing this. I mean, my sense for a portrait, she should just be leaning up on the bar. I mean, that's portrait to portrait more. You know what I mean? She doesn't have to look like she's actually doing the thing. So it worries me that your people may not be helping you tell a story, which is important to your work. I don't know if anyone else wants to. Pull up the fashion one or the couple one, but they're a little. It's, I mean, it's good for us to give you something to grow on. You know, I just love the light quality, I love the space, I love the whole thing. But it would be even better if there was more coming from her. Okay. Let's know maybe. Um, yeah. Um. I will say that, um, yeah, the portraits of the, of the people tend to be a little bit weak. They tend to be a little bit more predictable, and there's not, it's, it's like you didn't give the same thought process. It's almost like you were the villain at the time. That's what I get from these, is they're, they're more thought process. So what I would love to see you do is take the same conceptual thinking that you do with image number one and with some of the other images that are levitating on the bed. And, it, and this is actually a great challenge for you. Because you do those other things in your sleep. I can tell you are like good. You, you've got it. So to me, for you to, to, to finesse these and, and, and be able to incorporate couples, because if you do editorial photography, there may be occasions when you have to photograph you know, a couple in some sort of way and that needs to be believable. It can't be just a little high mom picture of them looking towards the camera. There has to be some sort of passion or something that, that makes them look believable. Um, I, I wanted to just mention one thing. You know, the, the gentleman that's sitting on the, the edge of the desk, the portrait of the executive. Um, while he is, while there's not a lot going on in the scene, I will say that I like the fact that you um, used his reflection. I found that interesting. I like the use of the negative space. Um, I, and as much as good as you are at retouching, I'm surprised that you did not get rid of, he had a couple of blemishes on his face that were just really quite obvious that I would think that you would want to take out of an executive portrait, like right here on his chin. I don't remove moles. I mean, if it's a normal facial feature that we have, I would, I would take it out. But if I'm doing a, an executive portrait, I think I, I would probably want to finesse that. But I do like, um, I like the fact that you, his environment and his tie and everything works well together. I would probably tone down that White House if not removed it um, in the background, that white roof or whatever. <coughs> But still, I liked. I thought your composition was interesting, and it's calm. A little amputated, I think. I love the the mood of the lighting and the colors, but it's a little weird, like 
the way half his thigh then mm -hmm. becomes a reflection and he's got no legs. Whereas the shape of him and his reflection is not such a uh, legible shape. I think what's nice though is he looks he looks relaxed and also by kind of leaning him forward, it helps him out. Yep. That combined with the lighting. Because he could he could photograph a lot bigger than he photographed. And I, okay. I think that's quite mm -hmm. quite good. And I think it's a good dignified portrait yeah. of the executive. He looks serious and he looks like he needs business. Commanding. Yeah, he looks commanding without looking, you know, like he's too fierce. Yeah, that's really nice. Right. And there's not, there's no accidents. I mean, it's obvious everything in there was intentional on your part, and I think that you did um, a really nice job with that. Right. We wish you the best. Yeah. Guys, let's be back at 1.30. Don't forget to pick up your rudder, snatch your feet, pause it in the proper spot. And Paul, you're not run away.